As we mentioned in the last video, in 2005, the Federal Circuit addressed a case between Gillette and Energizer Holdings, covering Gillette's Mach 3 razor technology and the accused product, the Schick Quattro. Gillette sued Energizer Holdings when it was just ready to release its new Quattro razor. It wanted to stop its competitor, Energizer Holdings, from competing with it in the giant billion dollar razor market. In fact, at the time, the Mach 3 razor was the re leading seller, totaling over $300 million in annual sales. Let's stop there and talk about why Gillette would sue a competitor for patent infringement. To talk about this, we need to understand the remedies a patentee is entitled to when a competitor infringes its patent. The first, and often the most powerful remedy a patentee is entitled to, is an injunction. An injunction is a court order for a company to stop doing certain activity. In this case, Gillette sought an injunction against Energizer Holdings, seeking a court order that would bar Energizer Holdings from making, using, selling, or offering to sell its Quattro razor anywhere in the United States. Obviously, this would be a very powerful remedy for a patentee to have because it could protect its marketplace, keeping its competitors out from using technology covered by its patent. A patentee will often seek monetary damages as well. One type of monetary damages a patentee can get is what's called lost profits. Using the Gillette example, Gillette could argue that if Energizer Holdings had gone ahead and actually sold its razors, that those infringing sales would have caused Gillette to lose profits it otherwise would have made. This calculation generally includes taking the infringer's number of sales of its infringing product and multiplying that number by the profit margin the patentee usually receives, receives on its patented technology. Now, if you think about it, this argument will typically get pretty nuanced. An infringer may argue that, well, even if we weren't uh, selling the infringing product, someone else would have made those sales. All the sales wouldn't have gone to the patentee. These are the arguments that typically take place during the damages portion of a lost profits case. Another type of monetary damages calculation is what's called a reasonable royalty. A reasonable royalty calculation is generally made up of looking at a hypothetical negotiation between the infringing party and the patentee at the point in time when the infringement began. This means that if we assume that they were both willing to enter into a license, what agreement would they come to as to what portion of the infringing party's sales would they pay back to the patentee? To determine this total number, you're going to need to determine what royalty rate, for example, 4% of all net sales of the Schick Quattro would go back to uh, Gillette, the patentee, and what's the total royalty base? What are you going to count as an infringing sale? More times than not, a patent case is going to settle before a judge or jury actually calculates these remedies. A settlement can take many forms. For example, the infringing party or alleged infringing party can agree to stop or revise certain activity. For example, Energizer Holdings could say, we're willing to sell this case and we'll agree to stop selling our products in, and competing against you, Gillette, in the marketplace. They could also agree to certain monetary payments, an upfront fee, a royalty rate. Royalty rates could change based upon a certain number of annual sales. Settlement agreements can take any number of forms. Now, patents can also have important powers for a patentee, even without the patentee enforcing that patent in a federal court. Quite often, competitors are going to see a technology company's patents and decide to avoid certain activity, maybe even staying away from that marketplace altogether. So patents can have important powers without a lawsuit ever even taking place. Another way a patent can be used is that it can be used to cross-license. For example, let's pretend that Energizer Holding had patents under which Gillette wanted to engage in certain activity. Gillette and Energizer Holdings could agree to cross-license each other's patents, either agreeing to pay each other a certain amount for the other's infringing activity or agreeing to permit the other one to engage in certain technology, selling certain products or services that they otherwise wouldn't be entitled to do under the competitor's patents. 
So generally speaking, these are the types of remedies and rights a patentee is entitled to if someone uses the technology covered by their patent. 